well historic historical and historical quote unquote so historical historical you know and historical period historical inspirations have the next reason is simple it will not be rushed the okay ca spokesperson i have i honestly have no comments that just speaks for itself i have no comment it will not be rushed whoa man where do you buy those crystal balls because i could really use one a historical total war fanboy ah all right what is up everyone this is quite the unplanned video but september 16th we had this video from the terminator why the next historical will be the best ever made you know barely a week later we have why the next historical could be a disaster total war speculation now guys my problem is in this title right away he says very confidently will be the best ever made but then he springs this video why the next historical could be a disaster so like will it very confidently but then i don't know but actually it could be and I, this is something i don't like with a lot of youtubers where they just they cannot take a stance on anything where they just they try to appeal to literally everyone in the audience which is just say something you know say something make an argument say something is bad say something is good don't, don't just walk uh, walk in the middle of the line with all the sludge well we'll start you know chronologically and go into the first one uh, here goes and i'm doing this so that you do not have pr you you probably will, will save yourself the displeasure of watching this video on your own okay so you can you can have me watch it on my own and enjoy watching me suffer probably this is eight minutes eight minutes okay 16 minutes let's see if my brain survives hey guys how's it going and welcome back for another total war video with the terminator about 10 months ago i released a video on why the next major total war game is going to be based on a historical time period my prediction back then was that creative assembly was probably already working on this new game for a few years based on some leaked info jobs on their website advertising a new tent pole historical feature and other bits here and there as well basically all the signs pointed to a resurgence of history in total war since then we've had warhammer 3 we've had immortal empire so things have been moving on that side of total war but we haven't heard much about what might be happening in the background in the historical world whether right off the bat if you've watched this channel before you already know this but if you haven't then i will uh, I'll, I'll i'll break this down so the whole fallacy you know of historical versus fantasy what's the problem with this well first of all it's a very superficial distinction notice that what he fails to bring up is the difference in quality between these games which is if we're if we're gonna talk uh, you know if we're gonna talk about the quality of the game which is what matters most okay and not the setting rome 2 was a pretty terrible game and still is by the way it was an absolute disaster on release the best total war game and arguably the worst total war game at least if we're talking about release states are both technically historical titles you know you got you have you have shogun 2 or maybe medieval 2 depending on which one is to your taste you know you can argue either way one either one of those is the best game in the series but they're as historical as they get okay and then you have rome 2 which is also as historical as they get and that was an absolutely terrible game on release no one was upset with the state of rome 2 no one was upset with the state of rome 2 because it was not faithful to its setting <laughs> if we're gonna play that game shogun 2 or medieval 2 aren't very um aren't aren't very historically accurate either you have a game like medieval 2 which is you know supposedly historical and according to this video and i'm based on his own argument what follows from his own argument is that while medieval 2 was a good game and it was well liked because of how well it portrayed its history and maybe to some extent yes it did portray its history rather well you know you can form battle lines unit quality matters but also it's not the end of the it's not it's not the end all be all of everything positioning matters terrain matters uh ranged units have their have 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 their projectile physics you know affected by terrain by elevation so it, to that extent it does simulate its history quite well but it also um 
you also have peasants who can fight in formation and and respond to orders just as well as trained knights can which is very historically inaccurate as far as there there are tons of historical inaccuracies and uh, liberties taken with the setting in total war in any total war game good or bad so no people did not like medieval 2 or did not buy into medieval 2 or rome 1 because while well, they portrayed their settings well that was probably yeah a pretty notable factor everyone knows about the roman empire so that's something that resonates with a lot of people but ultimately those games were good games they had very immersive combat where terrain mattered where flanking positioning won you the day where you could win by being resourceful look at look at what uh, what any decent player in shogun 2 can do with just a few units of yari ashigaru both in multiplayer and in single player it is truly amazing to what length you can simulate the most basic principles you know reenact or incorporate the most basic principles of a military commander despite the historical inaccuracies in those games on the other end of the spectrum yeah total war three kingdoms which incorporated the single entity bullcrap from warhammer which is something I'm going to have to bring up later on in one of these videos because he makes a very, very uninformed or just straight up dishonest point. Single entities. You have heroes, which is a pretty, pretty major element of the design of Three Kingdoms, of Total War Three Kingdoms, who can single-handedly defeat entire armies on their own. And on top of that, you have the horrendous difficulty modifiers that come from raising the difficulty, which um, disproportionately penalize your own melee infantry, giving, giving the AI significant morale and melee advantage, relegating an entire section of the roster quite difficult to use and a questionable investment overall. These two games, Total War Three Kingdoms and Total War Medieval 2, or Total War Three Kingdoms and Total War Shogun 2, despite being set in with you know in historical periods or with historical inspirations have very very different design philosophies you know at the at its core when you get down to the gameplay that's where the difference is and the setting in that scenario is nothing more than a smoke screen ca loves to talk about oh this is fantasy well oh this is we're gonna introduce historical elements into this game blah 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 it was never about that distinction that hello there i'm dropping in here from the future because i realized i missed a very it's in hindsight it looks like an obvious point and i can't believe i missed this because this is a very this is this is another major point against the whole fallacy of historical versus fantasy and that's the the attitude or the in, the insinuation or the implication that fantasy is to be held to a lower standard because something is fantasy it is automatically held to a lower standard than what is in a so-called realistic environment or in this case a historical environment which also conveniently ignores that the most popular mod arguably one of the most popular or at least one of the most popular and successful mods in total war's history is the third age mod for total war that predates the earliest warhammer game by a, f a full six years 
nobody who played who enjoyed the so-called historical Total War games was against was against Third Age Total War because of its fantasy setting. You know why? Because it was based on Medieval 2, which was a good game. And if it was a mod, that's a total conversion mod for a good game. Those people who want to play a good game are going to go play that total conversion mod because not only do they get to see that that IP or that 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 setting brought to life, but it's also paid respect with actually good gameplay. So I really, I, it's really, really depressing for me as somebody who's, who, who loves the fantasy genre when it's well executed to see this idea going around that, uh, th this disrespectful attitude that goes around to the fact, you know, the idea that because something has a fantasy label, it automatically gets held to a lower standard. That is a completely manufactured distinction that they use to market their historical Total War games to people like me who really liked the older Total War games and I got pulled into Three Kingdoms thinking hey you know I left I left Total War with Rome 2 and and then uh, Three Kingdoms five years later like oh it's getting quite glowing reviews oh historical they even re re included their own their own records mode you know to to give you a more grounded experience I'm like yeah and that's the point it's supposed to pull you in with that smoke screen Notice how they're not actually talking about the gameplay. And when you actually go into Three Kingdoms, it's there are virtually no differences between the gameplay and romance and the gameplay and records. You get instead of having just one model, your hero in record in, in romance mode, in records mode, you get a bodyguard, but it doesn't change the fact that the bodyguard is stupidly overpowered and much more powerful than any general unit should reasonably be. And and this unfortunately, these videos feed into that that whole fallacy. They just they just perpetuate the whole fallacy of this distinction, this completely manufactured distinction that maybe C did C A created this distinction themselves, or did they just take it from somebody else? They they saw that that it, this distinction, somebody the fan base or whatever created this distinction, and they just took it. You know, they decided they could take advantage of it. To the entire basis of this video is just flawed. The entire foundation is flawed because. It was never about the distinction between historical and fantasy. The original Shogun Total War had you playing on a fucking chessboard match. You have a chessboard map. You couldn't. You you moved units, armies from one point on the map to the next. It was as detached and abstract a mystery as you could get when it comes to campaign map movement. But it was where all this started. It had very very well simulated battles, especially you know for a first outing for the series. That game has firearm troops that have actual intelligent firing drills. They perform firing drills depending on how you deploy the unit without you having to even press a button. They will do a kneel fire if you deploy them two ranks deep and they will do a counter march if you place them three ranks deep without pressing a button. Whereas gun units in Total War Warhammer don't even have reload animations and don't even have any firing drills. Whether CA is actually working on a game and whether it may be announced this year is still up in the air, but I am a firm believer that it will happen. It's only a matter of time. So in today's video, I want to pivot on the topic a little bit because whenever I mention the prop Okay, I have to, I'll, I'll throw in a comment here, like it's inevitable. Well, yeah, what are you saying? Of course it's inevitable. Like you're saying this like it's some big claim like oh it's inevitable well it's if if we're gonna operate on if we're gonna operate on your distinction of what historical fantasy is or whatever the general distinction is between historical and fantasy then it's what a 50 50 chance that they go for fa for historical quote unquote so i hate this sensationalism so much aspect of a new historical people tend to become very skeptical and rightly so but in this video i want to try and change your minds and tell you why the next historical has the potential to be one of the best in the series now speaking of skeptical people and leaked information you know what i'm skeptical on to okay. the topic at hand there are three key reasons why ca's next historical game is going to be an absolute banger of a total war the first and and foremost obvious reason is it's time for change roughly every five to seven years yeah it is time for change but not the kind of change that you're talking about here i'll, I'll agree with that point total war goes through an evolution or reimagining we first saw this with rome total war released in 2004 which was wildly different to the previous game medieval then we got empire 
Okay, here's another thing. You hear this uh, this a lot in discourse of games and movies, like it's time for a change, or and then they bring up past examples like this, where they're like, "Yeah, you know, Rome Total War was a huge like change or whatever," but it's not the change the, that's important. It's 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 the improvement. Rome Two was also a massive change from Shogun Two, but not in a good way. <laughs> okay, they're both Ro from the jump from Medieval One to to Rome One was yeah, it was a big change. So was the change between. The, the jump between medieval to an empire okay yeah technically like that that was a big change but they, again they 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 skirt they, they 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 managed to skirt around the actual point you know with like these vague terms or using these neutral terms rather than actually making a statement empire which was a massive jump compared to medieval 2 in scale with its huge world map and brand new mechanics like technology trees and finally we got warhammer in 2000 is he not even going to mention uh, all the problems empire had he, he's not even going to mention all the problems empire had okay that's that's uh, oh, okay you're empire's problems most of them were, were were to do with bugs and poor optimization there were some weird design changes like i don't like the new city system in empire the way the, the way towns are and how, how they they simplified that system over from medieval too but empire was bad enough of a release to like damage the series for several years down the line like napoleon total war underperformed shogun 2 underperformed follow the samurai as a pretty pretty especially when you're talking about historicals and the demand for historicals and people want historical games it, wouldn't empire being a bad game be an important point to big up that would to, 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 to bring up that would affect a lot of people's you know desires for a historical total war game so kind of weird and 16 and of course compared to attila it was all completely different and new as well so the next and he's not even going to specify how it was different. Like, not even just give some... I, I'm not asking for, like, a 40-minute video or a one-hour video where you go into excruciating detail and everything. No, I would like that, to be fair. I wouldn't be against it. It would be a good change. Change. He just says things without substantiating them. It's been three minutes where he said things. There is historical versus fantasy, which is a complete fallacy. And he didn't, he, he didn't, he didn't even establish anything, like didn't justify anything. If, if you're the person, if you're somebody who agrees with him anyway, you're like, yeah, yeah, I get the point. You're going to fill the blanks in, in your head. But someone like me, I'm not, I'm not agreeing with any of his points so far. I, I haven't been presented with any arguments. I don't see it the same way he does. But the problem is he hasn't presented me with any justifications for why he sees things in this way or why something is going to be this way or why something was... And then he says that Warhammer Total War, I'll respond to that and give you my own. Warhammer Total War was a completely new and different from Attila. Well, in a very superficial aspect, yes, it's a completely different setting. It's, it's a completely different setting, sure. But again, is that is that even important? Like in the grand scheme of things? Now, if think about it from a general audience who knows very little about Total War or who doesn't know about Total War and might have stumbled across this video. Or from my perspective, is that is that really it? Is that really it? Because I can tell you, um, Warhammer Total War, both the sub series and the first game, is is mostly is mostly just a copy paste job of Rome Two and Attila. It inherits all of the same systems from those games, the bad ones especially, which is the fact that you cannot move units independently of armies that Rome Two brought in. That that wonderful mechanic the army limits where you're based on your faction power rating your arbitrary faction power rating you can have a certain number of armies and then the fact that the combat is still just as bad where unit quality is overwhelmingly the thing that wins you battles and then you have difficulty modifiers that uh, that disproportionately punish your melee infantry which leads to the heavy ranged meta and single entity meta of warhammer by the way yeah i don't i don't really see like where on where was the aside from the most superficial aspect where is how was total war warhammer completely different from rome 2 because i can tell you how for example rome 1 was very different from medieval 1 you had a 3d campaign map where it, it brought its own problems especially with the ai i'll admit that but it also gave you much finer control over the movement of your armies suddenly the positioning of your army there was a lot more that you can do with it you had setting up you had the potential it opened up the potential for setting up ambushes for taking different routes and avoiding enemy armies or striking a province from an unprotected vector you know you have multiple roads into a province 
Um, you could you could retreat from a province without completely abandoning it. There, it opened up so much that you could do on the campaign map. That was a huge change over from Medieval 1. So that, that is an example of something that's very different and not just in a superficial aspect. There's also the fact that the combat was no longer uh, sprite-based, like that there were actual 3D models in-game, which meant that the game could more properly simulate the effects of mass with formations. So yeah, those are pretty, uh, pretty significant changes gameplay-wise. Of course, the setting was different. But there are some pretty significant changes gameplay-wise. That, that would be an example. Like, you would give me similar examples that, that I just noted off the top of my head. By the way, I'm watching this for the first time, this video, by the way. And I noticed those things off of the top of my head. If you actually gave me time to script this, I would be able to come up with a lot more. Okay, so you had... you you He could have at least listed, taken t 20 or 30 seconds, you know, just some general things that Warhammer did correctly. Especially as someone who has played Rome 2, who has played Attila who has played Three Kingdoms, who has also played Total War Warhammer 2. If if my perception of Warhammer Total War, the newer Total War games is wrong, then please provide the examples. But the examples are rarely ever provided. Steam charts, okay? This game had an all-time peak of 26,000. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I do not believe in judging a game's quality by its player counts, okay? I'm simply bringing this up because he's talking about you know, CA's next game is going to be historical, and that's going to be a business decision, okay? And a business decision has to be based on something, and it's not just going to be on the quality of the game. I mean, it's, it, it, it isn't based on the quality of the game in this context, but uh, ideally it should include that. But it's not going to be the only consideration. We have Attila over here, like, ah, oh, 26,000, that's not, that's not atrocious. It's not atrocious. And then 2,200, well, it's, it's, it's a, it's a seven-year-old game at this point. But let me show you something, okay? Total War Rome 2 Steam Charts. Total War Rome 2 Steam Charts. You had an all-time peak of 118,000. That's five times the amount that Attila has. And more than double in terms of concurrent players, more than double what Attila manages. Total War Rome 2, its release state was so bad that it damaged franchise profitability so, profitability so badly that the next game in the series managed one fifth of its concurrent of its of its peak concurrent players. Pretty important, you know. Uh, all that information I gave you, both gameplay and in terms of business, from the business perspective, it's pretty important to bring that up here. You might just want to hint it. Just, just, just give us, just give us a crumb, you know. Just acknowledge that 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 Rome Two did things, you know, other than just make changes. Almost seven years since the first Warhammer was launched, and this next phase in Total War will be a fresh new take on what a historical game could look like. Old and new time periods, new and better gameplay mechanics made by dev teams and development processes that are different to the last major historical games of- Well, they are different. Again, you said change. Well, yeah, there were changes. Yes, this is different. I agree. Yes, I agree on some of your points. <laughs> 10 or 12. Uh, this, this video is actually slowly giving me brain rot at this point. Like, I, I normally don't react to these videos and I, I stay away from commenting on these things because, uh, because of this. Be, because it, it's slowly, uh, I, I slowly, slowly feel my soul being, being ripped out of me because of just... One, because none of these, you, you, how can you say so little in, in three minutes? How can you talk for three minutes and say virtually nothing? 20 years ago. The main point here is this is the moment of uncertainty and change that leads to the most creative and innovative games. Okay, there's two ways to look, two ways to look at that. Okay, yeah, uncertainty, yeah, considering, considering how every Total War, have every historical Total War game has been a failure in the past ever since Attila so yeah Three Kingdoms was a sales success at the start but that that was canned by CA because they didn't get enough DLC sales but anyway yes this is a time of uncertainty especially after you know the Warhammer 3 botched launch and we'll see how well you know they they released Immortal Empires beta beta recently and that's recovered player numbers but okay um yes it is a time of uncertainty I do agree but there's two ways to look at that, okay? When you are in a time of uncertainty, yes, it can either push you to be creative and take risks, or it can push you in the complete opposite direction and force you back into doing things that you know will work 
okay or that worked in the past and you think they'll work again so it's a statement that can go in either direction but he says like definitively like it could only lead to one thing but again speculation videos if you're gonna do a speculation video you gotta be very careful you know you gotta make sure your facts are correct okay to at least make somewhat reasonable predictions if you're if you're gonna make one of these videos my eyes anyway this is what players today take for granted they think of a new historical title and imagine rome 2 or attila when the reality is okay i like the fact that you're you're speaking for me basically like i'm i'm i'm, I'm as like i'm like I, i'm assuming i'm in this main audience this, this video feels like it is targeted towards me a historical total war fanboy uh, <laughs> oh my god i i cannot look at the word historical anymore in any context without 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 just snickering at it it's just so i think of another rome 2 and attila because you know third time's the charm we've had rome 2 was the one that started this whole this whole design philosophy that was the major design shift. Attila was well, copied that. Warhammer copied that. So even, okay, well, it's not historical. We won't count Warhammer. Okay. Thrones of Britannia copied all those systems. That's three games so far following the same design philosophy. Uh, three games. Third time's the charm. Okay. Three times is a pattern. We had three kingdoms, a historical Total War game. That's four times. And then Troy, which was originally marketed as a historical game, then they made the Mythos update because they realized people don't want a historical Total War games. They want good Total War games. So, yes, when they say historical Total War game, when CA says historical Total War, yes, I do think of Rome 2. Yes, I do think of Attila. Yes, because those have been repeated three times already. I have more than enough reason to be highly skeptical and think they're just going to give me a copy paste job. Creative Assembly will be doing something completely new with it all. And we honestly owe it to ourselves to shed our expectations and have open minds about what this new approach will be like to really give it a chance. The next reason is simple. It will not be rushed. There Okay, CA spokesperson. I have I honestly have no comments. That just speaks for itself. I have no comment. It will not be rushed. Whoa, man. Where do you buy those crystal balls? Because I could really use one. There's no doubt that almost all Total War games have launched a bit rough around the edges, some more than others. Mm. Okay, I'll give you that. I, I can't think of any Total War game that didn't have, like, notable issues at launch. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a question of, is it, is it annoying or is it game-breaking? It's, like, on that scale. I don't know. I'm not sure about Shogun 1 and Medieval 1 when they released especially in the last few years it always seems like ca is churning titles to me hey, well at least he at least he seems to acknowledge you know somewhat indirect you know like without not, not explicitly the empire and rome 2 are problems targets without actually properly testing and qaing for issues that need to be resolved warhammer 2 and especially recently with warhammer 3 are the best examples of this the games launched with plenty of issues from campaign map performance to buggy character models to features that straight up didn't work or were imbalanced oh that's interesting he's actually referring to like design choices but is he actually going to like just give us a list of something say something i beg you okay terminator please i know a lot of effort goes into these videos okay and it would not take you like listen it would not take you any more effort to at least substantiate give a few examples what were the issues yeah performance issues i can understand them i don't need me to explain them but you said features okay yeah we're getting there we're getting there features talk about the actual game design because that's the part that matters that's the part that matters and that's why historical games fail because they don't have an audience to market to nobody wants historical total war games people want good total war games that simulate you know combat simulation simulation that's the word he is, stop saying historical, say simulation. 
But when you take a step back and look at the whole picture, you can really see that the games were launched with a meet business goals now, fix issues later mentality. On the other hand... Well, but here's the thing. I, I agree with that, yes. But again, even though I agree with that, I, I agree with... The thing is, in this video, even when I agree with him, I agree with the conclusion. But the thing is, the reasoning isn't there. It's not substantiated. I agree with the conclusion because I already know can already infer what he's talking about but if you're somebody who doesn't know anything about the direction of these games maybe you've been out of the loop in total war for the past five years that's that happened to me like every like two years i, I just wouldn't play total war and then i'd come back to watch some videos to find out what's been going on so if if you're in that pers if you're in that position this video doesn't really tell you that much and if anything, it's misleading because it implies you. It's implying that everything is fine in the total war landscape. Aside from a few minor issues, you've had some r rough patches over the years, but it's not the case. And though, when you look at the most recent historical-ish games like Three Kingdoms or Troy, they launched with far less issues. I mean, as far as total war launches go, they were triumphs. They were relatively balanced, and for the most part, anyway, they delivered what people expected. And I have to, again, I have to take his word. I if I have to take his word for everything he's saying over here I, I i was thinking of you know giving some input on this video but it's getting really hard because of how vague everything is like i'm supposed to like do a multiple choice test of what could he possibly mean you know a b c d which is you know process of elimination which is the most likely i have to i have to do the work for i have to do the homework for him if i want to understand what he's trying to say so Total War Three Kingdoms having, uh, you know, having significantly less balance issues. I don't know. Um, cavalry were extremely overpowered, and they still are overpowered. There, uh, I did a, I did a video a while back where I, I encountered like within just one battle and campaign, I encountered some weird graphical oddities. Like I found a pool of water that was perfectly like square in the middle of a battlefield. The 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 water line wasn't wasn't like at ground level. Like you had ground over here, but the water ends over here. And, and and when you run cavalry through it, it's it's too deep visually, but the cavalry can still go through it and they go underwater as if they all have snorkels. I'm back after this game has crashed my computer three times in a row. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at this. Just look at them. Hang on. D does water... Wait, wait, wait. Does water not slow down cavalry? Does water actually not slow down cavalry? Hang on. Oh, so it's only in specific portions. And, and we, here we have submersible cavalry units, guys. Guys, no playtesting. Submersible cavalry units. Hello? Yeah, submersible cavalry units. Three kingdoms. Oh, man. Those, man, those men those men, and those horses must have lungs of steel. I, I came here to try and test one-on-one -on -one combat, but I, I, found, I found gold instead. Oh, whoa, whoa. My game crashed three times in a row and we're currently hitting 82C. 82C on the graphics card, okay? For what? Okay, it was it worth it? Was, was it worth it? Was it worth it? I don't know. If, is it less buggy than Warhammer? Maybe, I don't know. But again, like bugginess, again, it's not even addressing the main issue. The performance issues are not the main issue that people have with Total War. I don't think it ever was the main issue that people... I mean, the games were difficult to run. They 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 were pretty ambitious, yeah. So they, they were never easy to run, but I don't think that was people's main issue with Total War, or I don't think it is people's main issue with Total War current. It's so frustrating. He's getting so close to the issue, but he never actually addresses it. The difference them. I'm talking about, of course, here is they were not rushed out games. CA spent relatively more time making these games, testing and resolving most of the issues, and launching them without what seems like massive pressure to meet. Again, like, do you have insider information? Like, Terminator, I really don't know. Like, do you have insider information on how long these development cycles were? Or did CA state them themselves? Because at the end of the day, like... Again, it doesn't really matter though. In this, in this, in what we're talking about over here, I think the end product matters the most. Like the game we got, the game we got on release day is what matters most, regardless of what the development cycle was within the context of this conversation, you know, about what people want from a Total War game. I, I don't think when people decide whether to buy a video game, they, they go and look how long did it take for this game to develop. I think they go and like watch gameplay videos or something, assuming they're responsible customers and they actually want to get make sure they're spending their money on something worthwhile i do not i have never ever heard i 
Has anyone ever had a friend come to them and tell them, you know, you should try this game. It was in development for three years. What? He's, it's like, it's just constant, like, non sequiturs. Like, he's talking about, he's talking about historical versus fantasy and then rushed and not rushed. But does being fantasy imply that it's going to be rushed and then historical that is not going to be rushed? I don't see the th link between the two. Why one guarantees the other. I don't know. I'm getting really confused Business now. Deadlines. The next historical game I'm betting has been in the works for a few years now. CA is taking their time with this one, just like Troy and 3K. And for me, at least, that's a very good reason to be hopeful. Because Again, we don't... At least I don't know. Like uh, guys in the comments, I don't know. Like, tell me. Like, is there any resource online, official resource, saying how long the game was in development? Like, I, I don't know. Like, can we actually talk about the games? It's been five minutes. Can we actually talk about the games? Because rushed games, as we all know, are bad games. Fine. Not necessarily. No, that's not, not, not entirely true. I, I, well, you're correct, but you're missing something. Um, it's one thing for a game to be rushed and have like significant performance issues, but the design is actually good. That was Empire Total War. Empire Total War was more or less, it had some design problems. It was a pretty overall, a pretty decently well-designed game. But then the performance issues are really ruining it for a lot of people. And it's still quite poorly optimized to this day. Finally, the biggest reason why the next historical game will be amazing is, is he gonna talk about gameplay? Is he gonna talk about gameplay? Is he gonna talk about gameplay? It's because CA can now make a proper world map. You could not be more superficial if you tried. This goes back to the whole question about setting. I have never once played a game like Shogun 1 or Shogun 2 set in Japan and thought to myself, wow, you know, I, w I wish this was, a, you know, this, this map feels way too small or whatever. Like, oh my God, there's a lack of diversity. No, I was too busy focusing on how to get good at the game at least, or appreciating the, 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 the art style or just the general immersion of the game. So again, this is a completely like, uh, I don't know how this fits into the thesis of the video. Like it's a world map. It can be poorly done and it could be well done. So what? Empire Total War had a pretty large scale. It covered North Africa, Europe, the Americas, India. Pretty much most of the major like world powers at that time. It had a similar scale to Medieval 2. Medieval 2 didn't have India, but it covered the Middle East. It covered North Africa. It covered Europe. It covered uh, North America towards the end. And on top of that, you had all of the, the you had you had all of the expansion campaigns, the kingdoms campaigns that basically like focused on each like on individual regions and the thing is you know medieval 2 and empire had a similar scale in terms of the world map but they were very very far apart in their quality did anyone complain about like anyone raise a complaint that three kingdoms is only set in china or some province counts and faction counts and everything like it's not bad and it's not good it's a completely neutral thing i i want to know how it affects the gameplay but you have not talked about gameplay at all because I'll tell you why Shogun 2 is a great game, despite being set only in Japan, because uh, it has a actually well thought out building system based on opportunity costs. You have limited building slots and you have to think, what do you really want right now? And how do you want to specialize different provinces? And then there's also the fact that you can also you can also take advantage of what the AI has developed in its provinces. And then you add the technology progression. I have an entire video, by the way, on Total War's campaign map going into excru not excruciating details about 20 minutes long on a uh let me let me let me bring that up. let me see so where is that video it's one of my okay total wars campaign map i have this video basically going over why total wars campaign maps were perfectly fine despite having a smaller scale than warhammer or whatever and it's and i touch upon the technology progression in this and how the technology progression was well thought out. You can only research one art at a time. And you have to, you, uh, throughout the campaign, you're constantly deciding, do I want, do I want a, do I want access to say gunpowder infantry, or do I want access to better sword units? Basic decision, but it has huge ramifications on the campaign and it leads to immense replay value. And this is, this means that you can have so much fun literally playing the same faction. 
over and over again i have multiple i think i have like five live streams where i played as the josiah faction you can just skim through those i'm not gonna ask you to watch the whole thing but just skim through those and see how dynamic the campaign is and how you constantly have either naval invasions incoming or you want to develop like uh, in one Josai campaign i decided hey i want i want to go for i want to spend less money on armies but more army more and more money on fortifications so i'm gonna rely on my fortifications to you know tempt the ai to attack me and then rely on expanding through the counter attack rather than taking the initiative to attack them and you know it worked pretty well it was quite entertaining trying you know a different completely different approach to how i want to take my faction the same faction and i managed to do that and that's just one example and that's one example that's that's that those are two things you can do with just one faction in the game you might tell me okay you might you know to be fair you might be like okay yeah those don't sound like a lot of examples it's the thing is i'm actually giving you examples i'm actually substantiating my points i'm giving you examples basically off the top of my head to substantiate my points i'm not asking you to just take my word for something so i've already done more work than he than he did in his video like i've done more work substantiating my points or uh, addressing the, the the issues or the gaps in his like arguments in his own video than he has done substantiating his own points i'm not asking you to make a longer video again you can you can say a lot in eight minutes by the way you can say a lot in eight minutes you know if you if you if you really have something to say you know something to say and something to substantiate now i'm not saying that it's going to come out straight away on release or that empire wasn't a full world map but this is funny so uh, it's, it's almost like he realized he said something and he realized like oh wait no actually we did have a world map in empire but what Immortal Empires shows is from a technology and development point of view, Total War has finally achieved a full world-spanning, functioning, multiple continent campaign map full of hundreds of factions, dozens of unique gameplay mechanics, and a massive amount of replayability. The fact is... Hmm, again, uh, you're pretty much asking me to take your word for it. The scale of Warhammer 3 and its Immortal Empires, the same kind of pushing back... Okay, I'll tell you what this issue I have with. I have a video that I've been working on telling you, explaining one of the things I touch upon is why the scale in Total War has been stagnant for years and in fact has regressed. And I'll just go over it very quickly, okay? When it comes to battles, like first I'm breaking this up into campaign and battles. When it comes to battles, the scale has been stagnant for about 20 years. We have had unit size be static, almost completely static for 20 years. We're still fighting battles where we have a stack of 2000 men or even less now it's gone it's the scale has actually regressed thanks to single entity heroes and doom stacks and everything so we have less models on the battlefield despite all of the technological advancements we have had and you might say well yeah you know if we if we if we have 40 units or 60 unit battles it'll be harder to manage that's the responsibility of the game designers to figure out you know come up with a better ui most total war games have a terrible user interface even the older ones Try playing, try try playing Shogun One. Just just if you haven't played, if you haven't played Shogun One, it's pretty cheap. Go buy it. Try playing the game yourself and tell me that game has a good interface because oh boy, it does not. Yeah, that, that game does not have a good interface. Oh my lord. Having battles with sixty units is gonna be a challenge to design. That's why we pay game developers to fix problems. Or I, I think we should be paying. I, I don't know where the money is going to honestly but we should be expecting them that's what we demand from sequels for things to improve so it's not on me to make the excuse for them it's on them to figure out a way to do it because if, if we're gonna go across that logic if we're gonna go across that logic i could just say you know if we're gonna go back like let's skip back to 2003 or whatever let's just say we're in an alternate history where total war never went to 3d it stayed with 2d sprites the whole time and someone says, you know, I, I would be able to say, well, you know, they can't go to 3D because it's going to be... Imagine having 6,000 models on the map and they're all 3D. That, there's no way we can make that. That's, there's no way, like, technologically or anything. We can't do that. It's... it's No, no. They, 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 got their, they got their act together, CA, despite having much fewer resources than they do after today. And they're like, look, we're going to do it. We're going to get a new engine. We're going to have everything, campaign map and the the battle map in 3d all units individually modeled in 3d and they went and did it and it's still one of the like 
it, it, it's it is something it was a breakthrough not just for the strategy or tactics genre but for gaming in general i, I should remind people that total war at least in the like, 2000s was pushing the envelope of what was possible in games in general like there were very few games that even attempted what total war attempted on its scale there are so many games that could wish to have you know the scale the simulation the scale of the simulation that total war had at that at that time Boundaries, testing new styles of mechanics, and even brand new features is something that's not been done in a major proper historical game in a long, long time. Ah, well, you see, guys, we agree on something. Yes, they have not really innovated in a long time in historical Total War games. That's true. But again, I agree with the conclusion, but I don't agree with the reasoning. That's the thing. Yes, they haven't innovated because... <laughs> They, I guess they figured they don't want to or they don't need to. With a historical period like the medieval eras, the age of discovery, or the Victorian era, or even all three. I want to see the Victorian era gunpowder units don't have reload animations. A world-spanning historical game has immense opportunity in a way that we cannot even imagine. Yes, I mean, I agree. And that's when Total War is at its best. Now, the real point I want to make here is that setting our biases aside, all right? Yes, Immortal Empires and its map and factions and scale is right now the crowning achievement of Total War. Again, in a superficial sense, sure. In a very superficial sense, I agree. But again, is that, is that what you're really buying historical games for? If if people are buying historical games, histor historical games, for those reasons, um, God, it's quite depressing. Like, it's not a good thing. Uh, I think we should demand more than just, you know, having having a nice paint job on our games. Also, I forgot to mention the campaign map scale. Yeah, I was talking about battles. Campaign map scale. Uh, did, did, uh, did you forget that I, you know, I mentioned earlier that you have army limits. You can only have a set number of armies, an arbitrary set number of armies on the map. Have armies with generals. You can't split units off. You can't split armies off for different purposes. One of my favorite things in, in older Total War games is like you might, you might create an army of just a few units to perform a strike into enemy territory or to sack a province and just, you know, abandon it later. Just a small strike force with just such an amazing, like, return on investment. Like, I, I really like doing that. I really like figuring out how to make the most income in a Total War game with the least amount of troops. And anyone who, who has watched my streams or any of my Shogun 2 videos will know, uh, you know, I am the Dishonorable Daimyo. I love, love to walk into an undefended province pillage it and then abandon it because i don't want to hold it anyway i just wanted the money you can't really do that in these games because 
you, you that's using up a, a a very valuable set number of armies and it's it turns it into an all or one scenario where you're either going on an all-out invasion to conquer a province or you're not going like it, it makes it makes the gameplay less interesting it, it reduces the variety 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 of battles that you end up fighting the types of battles you end up fighting some of my favorite battles in shogun 2 were late game sieges where you have like a combination of early game units and late game units like in, in a very weird combination you can't really do that anymore you get copy pasted garrisons and you can't split units off it's just so what we should be asking ourselves, and I guarantee what CA has been working on, is how do we dethrone Immortal Empires to make a new crowning achievement? How do we make something even bigger, grander, and more replayable than ever? Bigger, grander, more replayable. Why not just say better? Isn't that what matters? The next game isn't going to be the pinnacle if it equals Immortal Empires. It needs to surpass it to be the best. Again, I agree. I expect a sequel to be... And this is so sad that you have to like... You have to say this like it's like so grandiose. Like it has to be better. And you're saying it in such a dramatic tone. But isn't that what sequels are supposed to do by default? Why is this something... They must have set the bar really low for Total War if this is something you're going to celebrate. Oh, you know the sequel is better? Yeah. Uh, you know, with all the technological advances that happened, with all the experience you've gained, I would be shocked if you come to me with something worse. Which is unfortunately what's normal these days. And that is exactly why the next historical game is going to be absolutely amazing. Well, I I, I do acknowledge that it's going to have a large scale, as in it's going to be a world map. They're not... CA has to sell their games on those easily marketing points, or marketable points. So I don't, I don't see... Yeah, it's going to be a world map. Sure, I agree. But amazing... I don't know. Again, based on how the past like five historical Total War games have been, I uh, I don't see a reason to believe why the sixth would be good. Again, you know, like I can't I can't look into the future and say it's going to be bad. I can't look into the future and say it definitively it's going to be bad. It most likely will be bad. But then you made this video saying will be the best ever made in all caps and everything like it's definitive and whatever. Ten months ago, I assumed that CA would be announcing this next phase of Total War this year, or up until now. Of course, with every prediction, there's a risk I might be wrong. But whether something will get announced soon or next year, Historical is next, and no doubt it will usher us into a new era of evolved grand world conquering on a scale of which we've never seen before. Whatever happens in the next few years, Total War is stronger and more popular than ever. The community and the developers are more passionate. Community and developers are more passionate. Look, if you're going to make a speculation video, in order for the prediction to sound reasonable, you have to base it off of trends. Okay, the trends is the important thing. The problem is over here, again, you haven't really substantiated on your point. You said they're more passionate, they're blah, blah, blah. They had some issues. Again, you have not presented any like substantiation for any of these points you're yeah it just comes across as this is the kind of video you make for the audience that you know will agree with you anyway who have already made up their mind and you're just make it making it for them to to tab out and leave it running in the background i guess i don't know passionate about the games than ever before and we owe it to god forbid we ask people to pay attention to our videos you know and actually put effort into ourselves them. to keep the idea of a new historical alive for the future of the series because Honestly, the way things have gone, you know, based on the trends, and my speculation is that it's going to be shit, okay? And my speculation, or rather, my desire is that it doesn't happen. I would rather... I would rather you put the corpse back in the grave than keep desecrating it. Things are about to get very, very interesting. And that's it for today, guys. If you've enjoyed the video, please do leave a like and let me know your thoughts. Well, I think I have enjoyed it, but not because I was doing this. I think I've enjoyed it because, I mean, I'm talking to you guys in the future. So, yeah, I enjoy talking to you. But that's just the first video. Holy crap. Hey, guys, how's it going? And welcome back for another Total War video with the Terminator. Last week, I made a video about why potentially the next historical game. You said potentially, but in your title over here, you said it very definitively. I, I don't know, like, 
did you did you make this video on september 16th and three days later you're like oh wow this is actually a really bad video and i missed the mark so badly i'm gonna make another one i'm surprised you even acknowledged it in the end i thought you were just like it could oh be God. one of the best in the series. In that video, I was quite optimistic and hopeful, and while there are still plenty of reasons to believe CA could do a good job of it, a lot of you pointed out that there are some solid reasons why we should err on the side of caution. Oh, I'm really hoping he actually brings up this is this is the video where you where you you salvage, you know where you where where you salvage the, the, the I don't know if the, I mean the train's already off the rails I don't know if you can do anything about it and that, uh, may, maybe you can salvage I don't know the riders the dry, the conductor he's still alive probably I don't really trust CA to make a half decent historical game so based on some of your comments I've decided to do an anti video to myself with many of your inputs to explore and lay out why the next historical game could be a complete failure and why whatever progress has been made in the last few games is over shadowed by the degradation of total war gameplay features and yes i do agree with that conclusion again but let's see if he actually gives the reasons in math class they would say show your work and despite how much i hated math class that is the one thing i agreed with in today's video, we're going to get into three key reasons why CA could absolutely screw up the next historical total war. Oh, gee, I wonder. And why even if we have hope, we should not give them the benefit of the doubt. Now, before I continue... You didn't even specify what those reasons were. I do just want to say one important thing. Without any hope, without any sort of community desire for a next historical total war, and without expressing that desire, it's never going to happen. My point in the previous video wasn't to express naive shill hype for a game... Ah, uh, ah... Uh. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm if I'm overreacting to this point, but I don't think you should ever say that in any of your videos, like ever. Like as a joke, okay. But uh, the way he said that doesn't sound like he was joking or poking fun at himself. It sounds like he's actually defending himself from that point, which I don't really think helps your point. Like, uh, is it? Are you saying this? Oh my, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to make assumptions about somebody's intentions. Like it doesn't, it doesn't really make you look good. That we don't even know about. It was to express that desire, share my thoughts and perspectives on why CA could prove us wrong. Why the next historical game, despite all our doubts, could come through to be one of the best ever made. I'm not going to say you can't prove that or you can't point my eyes to something, you know, point, you know, you can't point at something or explain something like I never thought of before but you didn't do that in your last video certainly i'm not saying i personally have unwavering faith in ca or like with this video that i am doom mongering the future all this is is a set of perspectives that you can do whatever you want with and as many of you said it's worth looking and sharing both sides yeah i know i'm 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 a reasonable thinking human being i, I really do not need you to tell me that it's of the coin so with that, let's look at the first biggest reason why the next historical total war could totally fall flat on its face. Just show us a picture of Rome too. The fact is, guys, the Warhammer games have made a ton of money for... Let me guess. You're going to say that we have single entities and... And, and is he actually gonna make a point? Oh my god, Let me, I'm, ex I, I am excited, I wanna see this. So what CA could do if they made a new historical game is look at the Warhammer Total Wars first and see how much of that they can emulate. And that is a very scary thing. If They've already done that, but I'll let you finish your sentence. If it works, it works, right? So CA might decide to never include naval warfare again in a historical because it wasn't there in the Warhammer games. And it yeah, I think they would actually think like that. That's their thinking. Like Warhammer has been the only lasting success they've had ever since Rome 2. And I, I don't see why they... Why the marketing goons at CA would not think, hey, you know, let's just do what, just copy paste what Warhammer did. It should work again, which is what they tried with Three Kingdoms, which is what they tried with Troy. It worked anyway. So why make the extra effort to put it in the game or take an even worse example? And this would probably be our biggest fears right would be if single entity units work so well in the warhammer games oh why boy. not 
Oh boy, I'm breezing rear impact right now. Not make historical characters or historically feared or powerful units act and play more powerfully in a new historical game. Why not make a William Wallace in a medieval game that can please please don't don't if CA watches this they're gonna like oh like oh this that's a great idea. They haven't already thought of it themselves. Oh my god, don't no, it would be a terrible idea, okay? Take on whole English armies or a Roman Varangian guard unit like a regiment of renown that can be recruited once and again be completely overpowered versus other enemy units. The point is, Warhammer has done so well for CA that... Mm. Financially, yeah. If a new historical is next, there is very good reason to think that the game could be heavily influenced by everything CA thinks worked really well in the Warhammer games. If it ain't... Now here's here's what I'm curious to know. Does he already did he already know this before and he's bringing it up in this video or like you said earlier people brought it up in the comments. So my question to you is either way. Okay, in the first case, so you knew about all of this but you didn't mention it in your previous video and you made your previous video in spite of knowing that. That's the first scenario. The second scenario is that you didn't know about it. So either Either you were dishonest in the last video or you just didn't know. I don't know which one is worse. If you're going to make a video, if you're, if you're going to be dishonest or you're going to make a video saying, you know, Total War historical, Total War is going to be great and have no background in those games. I, I don't know which one is worse. Ain't broke, don't break it, which means... If it ain't broke, don't break it. Now, I don't know if he, if he, if he meant to say that he misspoke over there or... I'm not a gonna... new historical game could very well get things like single entity units, repurposed minor siege maps, arcadey battle gameplay, and that's already there. In fact, it's been there, not the single entities, but it's been there since Rome too. You can, uh, I'll, I'll probably, I'll probably post a cavalry charge from Rome too on 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 screen right now, just for you to 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 see what it's yeah, like. These are what these guys are called. And I'm gonna go and try and replicate the Yari Ashigaru and Light Cavalry. Get the weakest unit of cavalry. This is a litmus test, okay? You wanna know how well the foundation, you wanna test the foundation of any Total War game you're playing. You get a unit, you get a bunch of units of spear infantry, the lowest quality spear infantry, and the lowest quality cavalry. And then you place them against mid-tier infantry. Take you can also test this against high tier, but you wanna you, main concern, go for mid-tier infantry. And I'm going, I am going for the lowest quality units, okay? You can bring up a defense saying you're bringing low quality units. Look, this is Total War. The whole, the whole, the whole selling point of Total War is being able to take out, to, to, to defeat superior forces with, to defeat higher quality units with your own superior tactics. You know, your actual brain. You know, they're going to charge directly into us. Let's see what happens over here. And I want to get rid of the general first and foremost. I, I I would I would not I would take out I would get rid of the generals right away. I mean I would I would test this without the generals anyway, so I need to look at look at how quickly look at how quickly those health bars are just tumbling right now. They haven't taken a single loss. These enemy units haven't taken a single loss yet. We'll see if that changes with I wanna I wanna get the general first and foremost. One man has died. I have charged two cavalry units. These are two of the weakest cavalry units into the general. One of them into the rear of the general, and they've only lost three men. They've only lost three men. Here, here you have it, guys. Higher quality units being unreasonably strong. Even when you adopt actual military tactics and try to use everything at your disposal, it just it just screws with you. My men, my men have taken equal losses. My men have taken equal losses because... And look at this cavalry charge. Not a single man died in the cavalry charge. Not a single man died in the enemy cavalry charge. Not a single man died in the cavalry charge. Come on, come on. Let's see this. Let's see. This is, this is a very long rundown. This should be a good charge. Nope, not a man, not a single man died. Not a single man died, not a single man got knocked over. Not a single man died. This is just one battle. You know, I'm not, I'm not even going to test the more elite units. I, I'm not, I'm not even going to test the more elite units. I went for a mid-tier enemy unit or AI unit over here. And my cavalry are completely impotent.
what it's like more and that would definitely kill any chances of it being a half decent game if there's one thing all historical fans would immediately shut down on it's the idea of a super powerful richard the lionheart going down and steamrolling the middle east or joan of arc a hist the, well yeah i do agree i wouldn't like that because Based on how CA did it in Warhammer games and how poorly balanced it was there, it's going to be poorly balanced here. And I, I don't like the way he's being kind of... I don't know, is he taking a mocking tone to people bringing up these concerns? Historical game akin to Total War Saga Troy, where faction leaders can gain levels and new battle abilities beyond just rallying and inspiring troops. And let's be honest, if that ever happened, it would cease to be a historical game. If that ever happened, it would cease to be a historical game. If that ever happened, 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 if that ever happened. Again, I already mentioned that the distinction is just completely false, so whatever point you build up on that is going to be false. Another key reason the next historical could be terrible is if it continues to use the Warscape engine, an engine that has continuously been repurposed with layers on layers of new code on top. I don't know about that. Uh, Napoleon Total War had some issues, but it was fine overall. Shogun 2, Fall of the Samurai. I really don't know if the AI, like the problems of the AI is directly intertwined with the engine or just CA not bothering. I, 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 don't, I don't see the, the direct relation between the two points top of old dead code that has led to the buggy and terribly optimized games we've had in the series three kingdoms and and then there's the, there's a very serious question to be had here i don't know about this but would changing the engine like undo just be like a blank slate like we're not going to import any assets since from the previous like i don't know how how to like, tell me i don't know how that works so i i'm not sure i don't know i don't know how that works someone can fill me in in the comments in the way that if someone's experienced in game design or has an idea troy are perhaps the exception because it, it would sound really stupid from like a business sense to yeah I, yeah i don't like copy paste games with just completely reused assets and no and uh, just copy paste you know jobs different paint jobs and whatever but at the same time practically like there's there's nothing inherently wrong with reusing assets it's when you do it in the, poorly that it's a problem here warhammer has done some good things with the engine of course but if a new engine isn't made are you gonna mention what those good things were no for this new historical i think many people would simply refuse to buy into it the reality is the current engine doesn't know what to do with melee combat which has led to the blobbing warfare we've had for years and that goes the same for naval combat as well so even if uh Naval combat in Empire Total War was actually pretty pretty decent, especially for a first try. It was actually pretty good. It's 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 surprising considering how bad that game was at launch, but naval battles were actually quite fine in that game. Um Shogun 2 naval battles, there uh, despite you know the terrible AI, it, there's there's a lot of neat mechanics in there. Like like the fact that masts masts on a ship are actually separate entities, so even in, in Shogun 2, if you have a Sengoku Guine, which has a single mast, and you have an Anban trade ship, which has like a four mast or whatever those are called, they can clip into each other and you can knock the mast off of your Sengoku Guine and it can be rendered, Im it can be immobilized. You can immobilize your own ships for the rest of the battle. You can also set ships on fire with firebomb kobayas and cause that to chain, to, 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 to cascade onto other ships nearby. And it can also affect your own ships as well. So... Those are just a few examples again, just some very basic examples of what you could do. And then there's the consideration for line of sights. If you have gunpowder ships, you need to properly account for how do you give, how do you bring as many guns to bear against the enemy without offering the same to them? If that were in the game, it would probably be terribly implemented. Proof of that is in Rome 2 and Attila, of course. But worst of all, Total War games are. But then you did, you just ignored the good ex again. You ignore you ignored the examples. Like he takes he like he he brings up when he does bring up examples. He brings up he forgets the counter examples. Are just not optimized enough. Every game that's come out has had ter terrible performance, and for a AAA game, that's just not <clears throat> acceptable by. Well, yeah, it's not acceptable, but it's it's pretty par for the course when it comes to AAA games. We all know how bad they run. It's not a surprise. Any stand not defending it as always, but still. The other side of this, of course, is the AI, which I think everyone agrees doesn't have any game sense at all. Things are...
I wouldn't say at all. I'd say it's very exploitable, but at all as being quite unfair. There were there were there are. Uh, I mean, just off. The, I don't. I don't think I've recorded any footage of this. But in Shogun Two, if you attempt a naval invasion, um, the AI will actually move its army around according to where your ship is and try to garrison the nearest province to where you're gonna land. I've seen that happen in my own playthroughs. You have to take my word for it, unfortunately, but it's an example. And also the fact that the AI will even conduct naval invasions itself, that's something you need to take into account. It will actually land troops behind your front line, which is a basic, it's it's a pretty basic thing. It's not nothing impressive, but it 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 it, it adds a lot to the game. Based on lines of code that gives the AI a set of priorities and parameters to follow, depending on things like culture, battle setup, etc. But not a lot of it is dynamic enough. And the priorities that oh, yeah, I agree. themselves lead to behavior that just removes any sense of immersion from the games completely. Total War AI doesn't feel like it uses the mechanics of the game and in a... Well, they already had a workaround for it. It was a workaround, like it's not a direct solution to the problem, but it worked fine. And that was just give the AI money cheats on the campaign map and you might be against money cheats, but... Against an AI, I do agree with them because AI in games is just not, it's just really far. Even now, it's its really, really far from being anywhere close to what a human can do. Okay. But then, the way Total War handled that was just give it access to more resources and make you fight, especially on higher difficulties, make you fight more lopsided battles and you have to actually be resourceful in how you beat them. So, they already had a workaround for it. It's... It wasn't perfect, but it worked. The connected proactive way, which leads to uninteresting and at times very frustrating game. What players in the past used to, to take advantage of the AI um, by using single entities to draw enemy fire. They would run a single entity unit forward to draw enemy fire and then force the AI to waste all its ammunition. So then the real fighting could be <laughs> could begin. How did CA fix that? Oh, we're gonna just make the AI not fire on your guy. So you can run them in front of an entire line of enemy archers and not have them fire on them just to not waste damage, which is ridiculous. Is it they, they should fire they should fire in a in a general area where the target is and one of the arrows is gonna hit him. That's one example of the way the AI can be abused and it's stupid. Yeah, so I gave you one example there. That's something you could have brought up in your video, but you didn't. The final Bad business practices, okay. The reason why the next historical could be really bad is CA business and development practices. What I mean by this is if a base game comes out that's been done by one team that didn't do a very good job of it, that a separate DLC team needs to pick up and fix in order to actually make it playable, or if we get a world map in which we have to pay hundreds of dollars to unlock Africa, Asia, and America, or if we get... Yeah, I agree. And this is something you should be... a this is one of those things where you should actually be like be super passionate about and mock them for it. It is absolutely unacceptable that for Total War Warhammer 3 to 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 play Immortal Empires, the quintessential or what should be like the end all be all Total War experience or the 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 best Total War experience or the pinnacle of Total War as this guy said in the thing in his last video. Unacceptable to have to spend what is this like f counting all the DLCs you're talking about $300? $300, you have to buy Warhammer 1 and 2 just to access everything in Warhammer 3. If you don't think that's ridiculous, then you're probably a part of the problem. <laughs> uh. Get a properly rushed out game because CA had to meet Sega deadlines for release. The fact is most Total War games suffered because they were pushed out the release door prematurely and then there's, I, I've noticed like in the past, there's this narrative that CA is just trying to make the games, but Sega is being like unreasonable with their demands. Again, do you have insider information? I, I don't think, like, I refuse to believe that CA doesn't have a part. Like it's all just Sega. Sega, Sega is the one doing, is the one that's like putting them on a leash or whatever. I, I don't really, I, I don't, I don't think Sega is, to, is, is completely to blame over here or whatever. 
with bugs and issues that put everyone off from playing the games. Total War Warhammer 3 launched with what? 116,000 people playing it on day one. That number went down to barely 20,000 pre-Immortal Empires. And now, even with IE released, the number of players on the game is around about where Warhammer 2 was before the launch of Warhammer 3. What I mean here is that the launch... Okay, we're getting actual, I'm um, sorry, we're getting actual information here that we can work with. Yeah, that is pretty alarming from a business perspective. I agree. I agree. You see, conclusion, evidence, it, it makes sense. It, it adds up. Launch of the game affected its longevity even more. We're, we're getting actual arguments here. We're getting actual actual points being substantiated by some sort of evidence what is this then i think many people it took, oh, it took me only 16 what is it 14 minutes of getting through his videos to, to, to actually get something realize and it's all mainly down to how ca develops its games and releases them if those same business practices continue with a new historical game with and they most likely will pre-orders the priority of launch with picking up the pieces and this is all going to happen i agree I'm happy you're bringing it up. Actual strategy for post-release, then the next historical is 100% doomed. The, that crashing and burning again all pretty, mu pretty much happened. Uh, Rome 2 nearly killed the franchise. Uh, Warhammer came in and saved it, temporarily at least. Then Three Kingdoms came and, and it was a sales success initially, but then CA botched that and made their wonderful Future of Total War Three Kingdoms video where they announced they were canceling the game and its last DLC, and then they're going to make it into a series. Brilliant. All together. So let's take a breather for a second. Overall, many of you who voiced your concerns on last week's video might be right. Perhaps I am a bit too hopeful when it comes to a new historical game. Perhaps CA's track record is all we need to... Is this you actually making a reflection on yourself or just saying it so... To like calm the audience like you are you actually reflecting or are you just ticking boxes or something because you have to because youtuber things because you know you, uh, youtuber things we gotta we gotta take both sides of the argument and not and, and not say Our anything expectations should be we, we have to avoid offending people at an all-time low and the reasons i've explored and shared with you today i think are strong enough to believe in that this video has essentially been a counter argument to some of the points i made last week to show i i i find this really curious this video format where you say like you believe in this and whatever blah 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 and then you're like i'm gonna bring up you know i th realized this from you guys and it's like you're taking two sock puppets at each other like this guy like i'm not uh, okay terminator you're, you're not moderating a debate over here you're the one who's making the video so it's kind of confusing you make a video where you're like it, the next total war game will be the best and you're supposedly voicing your own your your own like very confidently your own thoughts on it but then you go and bring up the counter arguments and like it's kind of weird like uh, i don't know it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of strange that yes there are two sides of every coin and we should be aware there's, of both of them i'll finish off with there's uh there's more than two sides to every coin i should have said last week Whatever side you lean on more or whether you're someone who sits on the fence, it's ultimately up to you to decide how you feel about a new historical total war by Creative Assembly. I've shared what I think could happen. And then it's not so much about people's feelings. Like uh, on, my, on my channel, whenever I try to do a video talking about how total war has gotten so bad or why it was so good in the past, I, I, I don't bring opinions. I, I try to... Like this is this is a gameplay mechanic. This is what this gameplay mechanic does. This is what it leads to. This is this is the positive part and this is the negative part. And there, that's me making an objective analysis of something that's separate from my personal preference. It's possible for something to be. I, I, there are plenty. There are there are games out there that I played that I think are good, but I just don't like. And then there are games that I play that, especially some of my childhood games that. I know are pretty bad right now, but I, I like them. I like playing them. You know, it's my personal preference to play them, but I admit they're just they're just not good. So you could have you had an opportunity in the in these videos to talk about like mechanics, like actual features, you know, that have been removed or been added even. Like I know most of them, it's it's more common for things to like, 
I made like a list of like 55 removed features with help from you guys. I've made a list of 55, like uh, 55 removed features in my follow the franchise video. That's stuff that we can talk about. You know, that's not debatable. There was a feature that was in the game. It was removed. Okay. And the question over there is, was the removal good or bad? In most cases, I'm not going to go into every single one of them, but it was, it was uh, bad. It negatively affected the games. Oh my God. Are we at the end? Happen. And you know that I am more hopeful than most perhaps, but at least now you have a clear and more realistic idea of both sides of the topic. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I don't know. I think I've all, I've said that all that needs to be saying, like it's set, set to, that I think I've said that all that needs to be said so far regarding this. Like, I don't normally, again, I don't normally do these videos. Like I, I just prefer to just do video videos where instead of talking about games, I actually play games. For those of you who might be seeing my channel for the first time or you, you might already be tuned in, you might not have watched my previous videos or I make critiques about Total War. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this, this is like, I don't know. I, I didn't go into too much depth in this regarding like, there's so much I could talk about to these games. I already have my two hour fall of a franchise video that I made in February before Warhammer 3 came out, by the way. Uh, there is also the campaign map video I showed you earlier. Uh, and I have another critique video on the production values in Total War, which I talked about, you know, regarding scale. And I'll be, uh, that it's currently in the works. So yeah, I, uh, overall, I find this quite depressing. Like you could have made actually like the topic in these videos is like the thesis or whatever you want to call it. It's very interesting. There's a lot you could have brought up. There's a lot of mechanics or features, not even like even within the span of eight minutes or 10 minutes, you could have brought them up, but he chose not to, and you instead made a lot of statements very confidently like you have insider information or whatever or you just expect me to take your word for it or you think i'm gonna fill the blanks in for you because you th i don't know you think i agree with you in which case i'm watching the video just because i agree with you and like mm, doesn't make it doesn't really make sense it's really sad seeing that this is the states you know like general ecosystem of total war videos but yeah, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment, guys. And let me know if I like I miss any positives or negatives in these videos I did not touch upon. Uh, this sort of session went on for a lot longer than I expected. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll uh, see you uh, next time. Bye-bye. Hey there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're new to the channel, I do Let's Plays for strategy games like Total War, city builders like City Skylines and Frostpunk, open world games like Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and first-person shooters like Battlefield 1 and Metro. You can hop onto Discord and join in and all the fun. And if you want to support the channel further, you can subscribe to my Patreon and gain access to exclusive videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye!